गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई साधरा शहनाज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ ह्यूमेनिटीज एंड सोशल साइंसेज इंटीग्रल यूनिवर्सिटी लखनऊ वुड लाइक टू वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस सेशन ऑफ अवर वैल्यूएटेड कोर्स एंड टाइटल एंशेंट हिस्ट्री फ्रॉम द परव्यू ऑफ सिविल सर्विसेज एग्जामिनेशन आई होप यू ऑल आर टेकिंग एडवांटेज ऑफ दिस कोर्स टॉपिक फॉर टूडेज लेक्चर इज गुप्ता एज A classical age of art. The age of the Guptas is often described as a classical age in the sphere of cultural developments. The basis of such a description in the in the fact is the fact that during circa 300 to 600 CE and exceptional.
Sorry for disturbance, network issue. The classical age of art. The age of Guptas is often described as a classical age in the sphere of cultural developments. The basis of such a description of is the fact that during circa period. The age of the Guptas is often described as a classical age in the sphere of cultural developments. The basis of such a description is the fact that during circa 300 to 600 CE, an exceptionally fine aesthetic ideal is apparent in many parts of the subcontinent. Art and literature both reveal parallels in their ideals of beauty displaying a fine balance between the sensual and spiritual while appreciating the artistic production of these centuries we can at the same time question whether it indeed represents the best of indian literature sculpture and architecture which is implied in the use of the term classical age or whether it marks one of several epochs that saw impressive developments in artistic creativity. An analysis of the artistic developments of this period has to take into account the patronage of dynasties such as the Guptas and Vakatakas. But it is important to note that other elite groups were also involved in the networks of the patronage. The developments in architecture and sculpture in this period reflect the increasing popularity of theistic cults. Religious architecture, the period circa 300 to 600 CE represents an important stage in the history of Indian temple architecture. Temples are located in the hilly Pradesh and are in a ruined state. 
the stone temples at Tigwa, the Shiv temples at Bhumra and Kho, the Parvati temple at Nachna Kuthar and the Buddhist shrines at Sanchi. Outside central India, there is the Buddhist temple at Bodh Gaya in Bihar and the Dasavatar temple at Deogarh in Jhasi district, UP. There are also ruins of a temple of this period at Dar Parbatiya on the banks of the Brahmaputra in Assam. Apart from these stone temples, there are brick temples at Gritargaon, Kanpur district, Uttar Pradesh, Paharpur, Raj Shahi district, Bangladesh, and Sirpur, Raipur district, Chhattisgarh. The early temples were small, the square Gargri sanctum, about 10, 10 into 10 feet was just large enough to house the image. There was a small portico and the roof was usual, usually flat. Temple walls tended to be plain, but the doorways were often in, intricately and profusely curved. Later temples, those of the late 5th and 6th centuries, revealed some changes. The temple was now built on a raised plinth and had a shikhar spire. The Dashavata temple at Deogar and the temple at Bhitargaon, both of which probably and curvilinear shikharas are examples. The Deogar temple had four large porches and its shikhar was about 14 feet high. The stone that comprised the structure were secured to each other with doves. The Bhitargaon temple is made of terracotta and bricks. Its outer walls are decorated with terracotta panels, depicting mythological scene. This temple provides one of the earliest examples of the true ark in India. The pillars of later temples built in temples of this period have capitals in the form of Puran Kalash, water pots. Although an elaboration on the earlier temples, they have a very modest appearance compared to temples built in later centuries. The sculptural decoration on the main doorway of Devgar temple. The many Buddhist stupas, chaityas, and viharas built during this period include those at Jolyan, Charsadda, and Takshila in Gandhar. In eastern India, there is the Dhamek stoop at Sarnath, which was enlarged and encased in stone curved with beautiful scroll work and geometric designs. The 128 feet high stoop has four niches at the cardinal points for Buddha image. Several fine Buddhist sculptures of the Gupta period were found at the site. The most prominent examples of the rock cut architecture of this period are found at Ajanta and Bag. The spectacular Buddhist site of Ajanta consists of several caves nestled in curving section of the Sahyadri Hills overlooking the Vagura River. There are 28 caves at Ajanta. There were two phases of activity at this site. Five caves were excavated in Satvahan period while 23 belong to the Vakataka period. Of these two caves, 19 and 26 were Chaityas, the rest Viharas. The scale and magnificence of the Ajanta cave suggests that they must have housed a prominent monastic community, which attra attracted lavish patronage from the elites of the Vakataka kingdom. The most sumptuous rock cut vihar ever made in India and attributes its patronage to Harishin. The two chaityas at Ajanta, caves 19 and 26, belong to the late 5th and early 6th centuries. They stand apart from cave signs of the earlier period on account of their richer sculpture, ornamentation, both inside and outside and the profusion of figures from the Mahayan Pantheon Cave 19 consists of a rectangular hall rounded into an apse at the rear. 
The hall is divided into a central section and two sides as less by a number of richly curved pillars that go down in the entire length of the hall and around the central image of worship. A stoop with a high, almost uh, spherical dome within which a standing Buddha is curved in high relief. The roof is vaulted and draped, a translation of the old wooden ceilings now rendered in stone. The cave has an elaborately curved facet with Buddha figures, attendants, and various ornamental devices. The upper part of the interior has sculpted panels representing Buddhas. The cave must have been originally painted in many different colors. Cave 26, which belongs to a slightly later period, has more elaborate and detailed sculptural decoration. It enshrines a huge stoop, which is seated Buddha curving high relief, adorned with richer ornamentation than its counterpart in cave. 19. The main Buddha figure on this stupa sits with legs hanging down from his seat. The inner walls of the cave have many carvings, including a 7 meter long Buddha in a reclining pose on the left wall, representing the Pratinirvan, surrounded by figures in mooring. Like the Chatyas, the Ajanta Viharas, to display a profusion of sculptural ornamentation. They consist of a colonnaded porch and three entrance doors leading into a hall. The hall with pillars arranged in a square leads into a entrance chamber with a pillar portico which in turn opens into a shrine room. The introduction of a shrine room into the viharas in an innovation of this period. Monastic cells are arranged around the central hall and in some cases also in the front, the columns and doorways of the viharas shows great variety. Some are rather plain, others richly decorated with sculptures. Floated columns make their appearance for the first time. The side sculptures at Ajanta are complemented by beautiful murals on the wall, ceiling, door frames, and pillars. Originally, most of the caves had paintings. Today, paintings survive in only six caves, 1, 2, 9, 10, 16, and 17. Out of these, cave 9 and 10 seems to belong to the 2nd or 1st century BC. The second phase of painting corresponds to the Vakataka period. The technique of painting is known as fresco sico, a thick layer of mud mixed with vegetable material was applied on the rock surface. A thin coat of plaster was applied on top of this. Paintings were made on this prepared surface using pigments mixed in a glue or gum medium. This type of fresco is different from true fresco in which powdered pigments are mixed with water and apply on wet lime plastered walls and in which the colors dry and sit along with the plaster. The artist must have used the brushes made of animal hair. They used and blended six colors, white made from lime, colin and gypsum, red and yellow from orchard, black from soot, green from a gluconite a mineral and blue from lapis lazuli. All these materials except from lapis lazuli were available in the vicinity of Ajanta. Apart from narrative scenes connected with the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas and Jatakas, the Ajanta fresco depict Yakshas, Gandharvas and Apsaras. In addition to the religious sense, there are many scenes of everyday life in cities and village. The artist's deep and sympathetic understanding of nature is evident in the representation of tree, trees, flowers, and animals such as elephants, monkeys, deer, and hares. 
there is also a great variety of decorative patterns in the narrative paintings episode flow from an into each other in different direction without any clear demarcations karmic observe that ajanta paintings are not conceived in terms of depth rather they come forward towards the viewer the artist knew the technique of for sorting and their paintings are marked by multiple perspective objects are painted painted as if seen simultaneously at eye level from above as well as from below the paintings are marked by a fine balance between the material and the spiritual the human figures are splendor well proportioned and elegant women have narrow waists and full breasts their faces were marked by highly arched eyebrows and elongated plate form eyes there is an intact range of sophisticated customs jewelry and hair style the artists used shading and highlighting to great effect giving parts of their composition a luminous glow the painting display some stylistic differences reflecting the different hands that made them it can be noted that the wish dharm dharm a supplement to the vishnu puran was composed in about the 7th century ce the very time when artists were painting the last paintings at ajanta 1994 this text gives a detailed account of the theory and practice of paintings and refers to earlier works on the subject the beautiful ajanta mural themselves point to a long tradition of mural painting in india bag is located about 150 meters northwest of ajanta nine caves at this site belong to circa 500 to 600 ce probably similar in plan and arrangement to those at ajanta the bag caves are more simple and clean <clears throat> the end of the hall usually has a chapel instead of a buddha image the purpose of a large room attached to one of the larger viharas is not certain some some caves have additional columns in the interior of the central hall to support the roof the bag caves also had paintings which have practically disappeared other major buddhist cave sites include kanheri and aurangabad sculpture the period circa 300 to 600 ce shows a continuation of earlier styles and trends derived from the mathura and gandhar schools but also the introduction of new ones much of the sculpture was inspired by themes drawn from hindu buddhist and jain tradition the iconographic conventions of the religious sculpture become elaborated and fixed the sculpture of this period is rich in ornamental design such as the foliated scroll the vishnu image are very varied some of them combine the anthropomorphic and theromorphic forms of the varaha avatar another form found at place such as mathura and gand gad so the god is in a human form surrounded with several radiating heads the deities attributes such as the shank and the sharak are often personified as dwarfish attendants known as ayudha purushas the image of shiv depict him in a combination of the limb and the anthropomorphic form the buddha image display a greater variety of mudras than before the plain halo of a earlier period makes way for once decorated with bands of ornamentation and the buddha's body is clothed in transparent drapery distinct style those of mathura and sarnath are discernible in the buddha sculpture in central india at udayagiri all the caves except for one jain cave depict hindu deities most of the sculptures are cut outside the caves these include a four armed standing vishnu cave 6 kumar cave 3 and ek mukhi ling cave 4 pratiharas door keepers cave 6 and 
दुर्गा महिषासुर मार्दिनी केव्स फोर सिक्स ए पार्टिकुलरली पावरफुल रिलीफ शोज विष्णु इन इज बोर इनकारनेशन इज क्विंग द अर्थ फ्रॉम द वाटर्स एट एरन दिस इज ए मीनिंग magnificent bore is sculpture with an inscription of the hun ruler dorman at sachi numerous buddha and bodhisattva image reveal some similarities with those of mathura and western uttar pradesh the notable sculptures from base nagar include a vishnu head and a representation of the sapt matrakas Mathura continued to be major center of sculpture there are seat, seated three tirthankaras including a headless one dated in kumar gupta's reign the figures are usually carved against the background of a curved throne or uh, are flanked by attendants carrying fly whisk chamadas a dead stone image of a seated tirthankara belonging to 400 32 to 33 ce was founded at kankali tila at mathura and is currently in the state museum in lucknow it differs from the seated tirthankara figures of proceeding centuries in several ways this jin has a stocky body with wide hips and high waist which makes the cross legs appear as tho tho they are tilting forward and downwards the ornamentation of the <coughs> long narrow pedestal is also different from those on kushan period jinas in the middle there is a chakra wheel on a low pedestal this is flankly by a kneeling male devotee to the right and a female devotee to the left both represented in a three quarters view with hands joined in veneration the coquent lions at either end of the base or depict, depicted with their heads turning backwards the mathura artisans produce many magnificent standing buddha figure as well many vishnu image and mukha mukhlingas have also been founded at mathura the buddha image from eastern uttar pradesh and bihar stand out from those of the earlier centuries with their expression of serene spirituality the sarnath buddhas of this period are considered by several art historian as among the greatest works of the art produced in the entire history of ancient india two standing figures and one seated buddha figure are especially renowned for their beauty and fitness and uh, fine fineness the seated buddha shows him the meditative padmasan pose his hands are in dharma chakra mudra the mudra of teaching wherein both hands are held and touch each other at chest level the halo around his head is beautifully ornamented beneath the throne as chakra flanked with monks with hands folded in veneration the buddha image from sarnath differ in several ways from those of mathura the rocks have no folds only the outline of the transparent rocks is indicated sarnath has also painted many bodhisattva image and narrative reliefs depicting scenes from the buddha's life there are many damage many damage specimens of standing buddhas from mathura only two are comparatively intact one is housed in the mathura museum the other in raspati bhavan both are colossal standing almost 2 meter tall on stiff legs they have huge beautifully ornamented halos around their heads the plates of their outer robe sanghati are clearly outlined and present a rhythmic flow of lines they hold up a portion of this rope in their left hand the right hand is missing but was probably raised in the protection granting abhay mudra the hindu sculptures from this era include a lintel depicting vishnu surya chand a procession of musician young girls and full bearers a relief carving of krishna lifting govardhan mountain was found at varanasi
apart from the ajanta caves example of the buddhist sculpture of this centuries are found at kanheri and aurangabad the kanheri caves of this period were comparatively simple but their sculpture establishment includes representation of various buddhas and bodhisattvas including figures arranged in mandalas at aurangabad near ajanta several buddhist caves were excavated in in the 5th to 6th century their sculptural decoration includes buddha and bodhisattva figures hannington suggests that the prominence of female imagery especially the female attendant who frequently flanked the bodhisattvas may reflect tantric or vajrayana influence one of the most beautiful relief sculptures in this cave is found to the left of the central door in cave 7 this shows tara flanked by two female figures perhaps aspects of herself accompanied by dwarfs on the left wall of the same cave shrines is a fine relief of a woman dancer flanked by six female musicians among the stone is sculpture assigned to the period circa 300 to 600 ce is larger than life figure of a horse carved out a out of beach sandstone found at kharigarh at uttar pradesh and currently in the state museum lucknow it bears a much damaged sanskrit inscription which seems to refer either to samudgupta or kumar gupta first it has been suggested that this horse represent the sacrificial horse in one of the ashwamedh sacrifices performed by samudgup but there is no definite evidence to support such an interpretation mention may also be made here of the developments in the north west sites such as hadda in afghanistan show the increasing use of stucco instead of stone the relief sculptures show elements and modification of the earlier gandhar style among the most fabulous sculptures in this reign were the gigantic figures carved into a cliff side at bamiyan one of these was a buddha figure standing almost 55 uh, 5 meter high tragically the sculpture bamiyan sculptures were destroyed some years ago by the taliban metal image include a copper image of the buddha found at sultan ganj at bihar this is uh, stylistically similar to the stone sarnath sculpture but is now usually thought to belong to a later period a small image of buddhas and bodhisattvas have been found at gandhar and at many sites in the ganga valley as well a hoard of metal sculptures that seem to stylistically belong to this period was found at chausa in bihar it includes a figure of the jain tirthankara rishabnath the terracotta art of this period includes small figurines and plaques found at many places including kaushambi rajghat bhita and mathura these represent animals ordinary people and gods and goddesses such as durga kartike and surya many terracotta heads have been found at akhnur in kashmir terracotta plaques stem with heads and figures were also found at the site of harwan in kashmir several finely modeled terracotta reliefs were found at the buddhist stupa site of devanimori in gujarat the seated images were placed in knees all around the lower part of the stupa the stupa was also faced with terracotta ornamentation decorated pilasters jumps metal stones chaityas arch vegetal scroll grotesque heads etc which have been found at the site the brick temple at bhitar gaon was faced with terracotta panels and other sorts of ornamentation only a few traces of which survive among the remarkable piece of monumental terracotta sculpture are the almost life size images of the goddesses ganga and yamuna founded at arichhat such images were 
placed in temple niches. Sanskrit literature, the period circa 300 to 600 CE is often described as the classical age of Sanskrit literature in that it represented the attainment of a high watermark and set standards of later ages. The Sanskrit language acquired its classical form both in poetry and prose. Kav is sometimes translated as poetry but has a broader meaning of literature as a work of art. It can take the form of prose, gadd or verse, pad or a combination of both and it can be distinguished from other types of compositions such as agam, religious or canonical texts, itihas and sastras on specific subjects. As mentioned in the previous uh, Ashv Ghosh was the first known writer to use Sanskrit for non-religious composition. The Allahabad Prasasti is in mixed prose and verse. The style is known as Champu Kavya. There was an increase in the use of prose in Sanskrit literature during this period. This is also the time when the transition from Prakrit In the mid first millennium BC, the Prakritic dialects underwent a transition from the stage of the intermediate Prakritics, Maharashtri, Saurshani, and Magadhi, to the phase of the dialects known as Aprabhans or Deshi. It is interesting to note that the Natisas prescribe that in Sanskrit drama, the high characters such as kings, minister etc speaks in sanskrit while the low characters such as women even queens and servants generally speak in prakrit this sort of convention was in fact followed in sanskrit dramas we know very little about the authors of the literary masterpieces of these centuries often there is confusion about when and where they where they lived and legends are more abundant than definite biographical details. For instance, some legend describes Shudrak as a king of Vidisha. Others suggest that he may have been a ruler of Abhir tribe. Kalidas seems to have been connected with the city of Ujjaini and is associated in tradition with the court of a king named Vikramaditya. Although whether not uh, although whether or not this was the Gupta king, Chandgup II is uncertain. Kalidas is counted among the most brilliant playwrights of this period, although there is uncertainty about exactly when he lived, lived and wrote. His dramas, Abhigyan Shakuntalam, Malvikagni Mitra, Vikramok Shiva, and his lyrical poems, Raghuvansh, Kumar Sambho, and Meghdu are considered masterpieces of Sanskrit literature, known among other things for his beautiful poetic description of love. His works also display an element of humor in some places. His style is considered an example of the Vedarbi style. The style of the Vedar region, Ban Bhatt and Dandin praised the sweetness, Madhuri of his writing. However, Kalidas also invited some criticism from ancient critics. For instance, Mammat in his Kavi Prakas describes the eighth canto on the Kumar Sambhav, where Kalidas described the love making of Shu and Parvati as Im improper. Bhas, another important playwright, was author of works such as hmm, such as Madhima, Madhyam Vyog, Dut Ghatoch, Dut Vek, Bal Charit, and Charudat. Sudraksh, Mich, Mrich Katikam, and Bharavi's Kiratarjuniyam are among the other prominent literary works of the period. Bhatti's Ravanath, 7th century, illustrates the rules of grammar while telling the story of Rama's life. Other great dramatists of time, such as Mentha, author of work called Hayagrivit are known through reference and 
quotation in the writing of later writers and literary critics. Apart from Kavya literature, there were works that laid down the principle of principles of poetics and dramatically not discussed. There is considerable overlap in these two subjects. Bahman's Kavya Lankar and Dandin's Kavya Dars deal principally with poetics. The main function of Kavya, according to these treatises, is to produce delight of joy. The Nartisas is the oldest known treatise on drama. There must have been interaction between the writers, kavis, and theoreticians. Apart from select performance for elite audience consisting of kings and wealthy patrons, Kavi probably obtained its widest audience in dramas performed in popular festivals. Plays were performed in king's places, and some kings were themselves gifted kavis. Nagrakas were supposed to organize and participate in social gatherings, ghosties, and festivals and that include dramas. It, no, it is notable that most of the kavis we know of seem to have been Brahmans. Many important Sanskrit texts were compiled during 300 to 600 CE. These include the major Puranas, the Mahabharat, and the Ramayana. In the field or field of grammar, Bhartari wrote a commentary on Patanjali Mahabhash. The Sanskrit grammarians ushered in it, linguistic as a formal science. As mentioned at the <coughs> beginning time, several dharmasastras work the Yagval, Narat, Katyayan, and Vrihaspati Smri were composed in this period. Kamandak Nitisar, a work on statecraft, belong to this period, as does the Kam Sutra, a treatise on sensual pleasure. No extant works on sculpture survive, but given the universality of art style, such text, text must have existed. The Vishnu Dharma Quran has a section on painting. The Panchatantra is an example of a Nidarshan, a work which shows through illustration what should and should not be done. The date and authorship of this text are uncertain. Its stories are presented as narrated by a sage named Vishnu Sharman, the three princes whom he instructs in Niti, policy, statecraft, through many engaging stories have names ending in suffix Shakti, which suggests the possibility that the work was composed in the Vakataka Empire. <coughs> the text is divided into five sections, illustrating the following topics, splitting an alliance that is contrary to one's interest, forming an alliance, wager war, getting the better of a fool, and the result of a action without reflection. Most of the Panchatan stories are amusing, hysterical, Tells in which animals play an important role. The style is elegant, prose interprets with verses. Philosophical texts reflect the debates on of the time and refute their rival position. New section added in this period of the Brahma Sutras, Yoga Sutras, and Nyaya Sutras include, included a refutation of the Buddhist and Jain schools. The many philosophical texts belonging to this time include the uh, Samkhik of Ishwar Krishna, which gives a systematic account of Samkhya philosophy and seems to belong to the 4th or 5th century. Vyas' commentary on Patanjali Yoga Sutra may also belong roughly to this period. Vatsyayan, a Nyaya scholar, can be assigned to the mid 4th century CE. <coughs> Vasesic Sutta of Kanat can be assigned to the 5th century. Noted scholars of Mimansa included Prabhakar and Kumaril Bhatt, who lived a little bit later in the 7th century. 
astronomy and mathematics the developments in various spheres of the natural sciences need to the investigated and subjected to sober analysis avoiding uh, exaggerated claims but acknowledging important contribution and breakthroughs the earliest evidence of ancient indian astronomical knowledge is continued in the vedang text of text on jyotish or astrology the main focus of which was to fix the date of sacrifice Special rituals. The Sanskrit name of the science of the Jodhia have Greek origins, and it seems that Greek influence led to the sequence of planets being fixed in the names of the seven days of the weeks in week in Indian texts. A Sanskrit text known as the uh, Yavan Jatak reflects the transmission of Hellenistic astronomical ideas into India. how were india astronomers appears to made certain major breakthroughs independently var varaha me panch siddhantika 6th century summarized the astronomical works and ideas of the preceding centuries but ascribed their authorship to divine or semi divine beings the earlier known <coughs> historical astronomer in india aryabhatt who wrote at least two works the aryabhatta a text which survives and deals with astronomy and mathematics and aryabhatta siddhant which is known only through reference in later works this astronomer seems to have been a native of uh, ashmaka country on the godavari this is clear from the fact that the 7th century commentator bhaskar called the calls the aryabhatta the ashmak tantra and ashmakiya and the followers of the arbhatta ashmakiya a statement in the arbhatta indicates that arbhatta lived in kusumpura patliputra he was obviously aware of the ideas and method of his predecessors but struck his own course i dig deep in the ocean of astronomical theories true and false he writes and rescued the precious sunken jewel of true knowledge by means of the boat of my own intellect aryabhatta had an earth centric view of the universe he thought that the uh, planets move around the earth in circular epicycles uh, nonetheless the he was the first astronomer to give a scientific explanation of eclipses uh, he established that ex- uh, eclipses were not caused by the demons rahu and ketu but by the moon coming within the earth's shadow or between the earth and sun he worked out how to ascertain which part of the moon would be obscured during an eclipse he was also the first discovered the that the earth rotated on its axis another one of his many achievement was to find out the sine function and use them is in astronomy he worked out the correct equation for calculating the orbit of a planet and gave an extremely accurate estimate of the length of a year Unfortunately we do not know about the experiments or method used by the Aryabhatta in reaching such momentous conclusions Vara Meer was the was a 6th century astrologer astronomer and mathematician who belonged to Avanti in western Malwa mention has uh, already been made of his Panch Siddhantika where in the summarize of the five astronomical school prevalent in the time his brihat sahita is an encyclopedic work dealing with diverse topics including how to sharpen swords how to ascertain the value of precious metals and stones how to make trees bear fruit out of season how to distinguish the good breeds of animals and how to divine the location of water it also discuss the nature and structure of temple temples places and houses it gives uh, an explanation of seasons and discusses 
meteorological issues such as the correlation between the clouds winds and amount of rainfall brahm gupt an astronomer and mathematician of the late 6 to 7 century was the author of the brahm putta siddhant and the khandan khatika these texts become very influential within india and their arab translation and uh, adaptation introduced indian astronomy to the arabs uh, the brahm sutra siddhant is also the first surviving indian text containing a systematic discussion of astronomical instrument as well as method of computing astronomical elements from reading uh, taken with them the instruments include accessories astronomical instrument for measuring time and observing the uh, classical bodies instruments that turn automatically for the duration of one day and once that rotate uh, perpetually the accessories uh, Uh, comprise water a pair of compasses plumb line uh, hypotenuse shadow chaya midday the sun and the local latitude akshan the text mention nine astronomical instrument chakra a circular wooden plate graduated into 360 dhanush uh, a semi circular plate tarth uh, gol a quarter plate yashti is स्टाफ शंकु घटिक कापाल काकरतरी टू सेमी सर्कुलर प्लेट ज्वाइंट टुगेदर एट डिफरेंट लेवल्स एंड विथ ए हॉरिजॉन्टली प्लेस चक्र एस आर शर्मा पॉइंट्स आउट दैट द इंस्ट्रूमेंट मेड ऑफ वुड और बैम्बू आर वेरी सिंपल इन डिजाइन एंड कुड नॉट हैव प्रोवाइड मच प्रसिजन इन मेजरमेंट this suggests that astronomers probably relied more on their superior computing skills however brahm gupta also referred to complex automatic devices called swam vaha yantras which reflects an awareness of the idea of perpetual motion the roots of in indian mathematics can be traced to the sulva sutras appendix appendices to the Uh, sutras sul means measurement and the sulv sutras are manuals for the preparation of the site where vedic sacrificial rituals were to be uh, performed dealing especially with the construction of vedic brick fire altars among among other things these manuals contain one of the earliest expression of the principle behind what later come to be known as uh, Pythagoras theorem in geometry the sul sutras also made suggestion for squaring a circle to construct using only ruler and compasses a square whose area is equal to that of a given circle in later times the term ganit shastra was a most frequently used term for mathematical science one of the most important discoveries of ancient india mathematicians was the decimal system of notation based on the place value of the first time first nine numbers and the use of symbol known as bindu for zero the use of this system greatly simplified arithmetical calculation the oldest uh, datable evidence of the decimal place value system of notation is in a 3rd century work on astrology called the yavan jatak this work does not have the zero symbol a dot was used in matrix chandas by pingal in the chandrasur a pre second century bc work varaha nirpan siddhantika is the earliest datable text to give zero both as symbol and as a number that is notion was used by varaha meer and was referred to by aryabhat in his aryabhatiya 
Aryabhatta's method of expressing the square root and cube root presupposes the decimal place value of numbers. This shows that Indian mathematicians <coughs> were using the system in the 5th century CE. In Europe, the old uh, uh, cumbersome system was followed till the 12th century when the Europeans learned the new system from the Arabs. Arab writers such as uh, Ibn Wasiya, Al Masudi, and Al Baruni, in fact, give the credit for the discovery of the system to the Hindus. Now the session is open for questions answer round. No question. Question answer session is closed. Okay, thank you.